Well, hi, thanks for joining me here in my shop. I'm going to be doing some experiments on how to improve AM radio reception here in my uh, shop, which if you watched my videos, you know there's a, a large amount of noise in here and often very little AM signal. And some radios, because their front ends are not designed uh, well, but they're just not not that powerful of a front end in the radio, I have a heck of a time picking up radio stations down here in my shop. Others uh, are able to do it uh, reasonably well. But in any case, I can certainly benefit by improving the antenna arrangement in my shop here. So that's what I've got set up in front of you. I've got this junker radio, which amounts to nothing more than this capacitor. This is all I'm doing anything with. The rest of it doesn't even need to be here, but this is mounted on it, so here it is. And of course, I can turn it. And um, in the back here, you see a coil from another radio, a coil that I regularly use to try to induce signals in the antennas that are built into radios like this one. So this is the radio we're going to use to uh, listen with. Uh, it has a rod antenna in it, and there's no other connection. It's just a coil rod antenna like all these radios have for AM radio. And uh, so first we will start with no connection to my external antenna. Here's the lead from the external antenna. So this is sticking in my shop, and this is going to have some effect, but so minor as to not be considered just a piece of wire like that. So let's turn up the radio here. Okay, so on this radio, um, you can see where it's tuned, obviously, and up above is a signal strength indicator. It's indicating full strength right now. There. This is how hard it is to find a quiet spot, I and mean, this isn't even quiet, in my shop. The reason it's indicating full strength all the time is the noise level in here from the computer equipment and other such things. You know, not, not completely untypical of uh, anybody's house these days. Now there's a station at 640. There it is. So if I turn the radio 90 degrees from there, I'm actually um, pointing the internal antenna in such a way that it's nulling out the signal at 640. Now often when I'm working on a radio, uh, it may very well be in a position where its antenna is nulling out the signal I'm trying to receive. And it's very, very awkward to try to rotate a radio around uh, to get the antenna aimed right when you've got it half taken apart on the bench here. That's a real problem. And that's why I use the, uh, the, the, the loop antenna here. Uh, and I can move the loop antenna around. Let's give it a try. The loop antenna is connected to nothing right now, just these two open wires. So, of course, it's not going to do anything. Is it? It's just a loop of wire. If I connect the loop, I'll use the yellow lead here, to the incoming antenna wire. Okay, so now it's just a loop at the end of, a, of an outdoor antenna, but the loop doesn't go anywhere. No effects. But now if I take the other end of the loop, which is this red wire, and I ground it, I can use this black wire, it's connected to the power ground right here. Okay, it's just a house hydro power ground. Connect it. Huh. We get a little bit of radio. What I'm interested in is can I boost or control this effect to make it even more powerful in my shop? And that's where this capacitor is coming into play. I'm going to try to connect the capacitor uh, first in series and then in parallel and tune it around and just see what kinds of effects we can get out of it. Now in series, if I got this right, in series when you hit the resonant point there can be a very heavy reactive current flowing in the capacitor and the coil. 
that right? You know what? I'm not even going to say anymore because <laughs> I tend to get these things all backwards. So let's let's hook up the capacitor. Okay, so I disconnected from ground, and the signal has has disappeared. By connecting it to the chassis here, and connecting it to the frame of the capacitor, which is one side, which is the uh, one side of the capacitor, I'm connected to the other side. I'm connecting ground to this side. So now, the way this is connected, the signal comes in on my antenna through the coil, out of the coil, through the capacitor, into ground. So the capacitor is in series with the coil. Let's see if we can get anything happening here. A little bit. Interestingly enough, I think that's roughly where you would tune in this, this signal if this were a working radio, right in this area. See if I can make it more dramatic if I put the coil here. Turn it up a bit. It's a bit of a uh, contact problem in here. That's where you hear that. That's static there, which I'm not going to worry about. So it does seem to have an effect. Okay, let's try the other end of the uh, AM band here. I'll leave the coil sitting here. Okay, well, we'll tune to a station I'm aware of way up at the other end, 15, 1580. It's a low power local station. Unfortunately, they play music here, so good. This is the time. Okay. Okay, let me disconnect the antenna completely from the loop. That made a little bit of a difference there. It sounds like looks like this tuning thing isn't doing much. Let me turn the radio so its own antenna isn't. You know, the problem with this radio is the antenna is always connected. Okay, there I've weakened it right off. Reconnect this. Okay, so now the antenna is connected through the coil, through the capacitor. It's almost at right angles here. Turn it this way. Ha. Paralleled. To my ear, this capacitor is not making any difference. So let's try uh, putting the capacitor in parallel with the coil. Leads. 
Okay. So now I have the capacitor and coil in parallel and the antenna feeding through them. Nothing. Try the 640 channel. Disconnect the antenna here. Wasn't connected very well. Okay. Barely hear it there. Now we'll connect to the antenna and the uh, coil capacitor combination here. And tune it. say there's no effect. Let's try this other. This is the uh, oscillator capacitor. It's not tuned at a regular radio frequency. Well, let's see what happens. Let's put it back into uh, the series arrangement. So we know that this is a typical capacitor from a radio. There it is. And we know this is a typical antenna from the back of a radio. There's no doubt about it. This coil is wound with a certain number of turns for a reason. So it would resonate properly with the radio it was meant for. Chances are it was connected essentially directly to one of these capacitors. And I believe the connection would be in parallel. But I could be mistaken about that. So here we have it in series. And uh, it appears to resonate the antenna coil when I have this tuned roughly in this area. And, and what this can do uh, by, by tuning this coil, and I think we noticed this earlier but I didn't comment on it, is it makes the coil resonant at the frequency of interest and reduces everything else. And that may be more what's going on here. It's not so much boosting the signal in the coil as it is reducing all the other signals that are in that coil. I mean, everything under the, under the sun is flowing in that coil from the antenna. And in doing that, it's providing a stronger uh, desired signal for the radio to pick up in the midst of all this noise, too. Uh, obviously, you can't uh, you can't beat connecting it directly. Hey, I think I can. Let me see. I can. 
AM shortwave antenna. Yeah, I got a connection here. So let me set that up and we'll, we'll connect directly to the radio. Is there a switch on this to turn off the internal antenna? I don't see one. So this appears to be connected uh, in addition to, and I see there's an antenna connection here and a ground connection. So lots of stuff to fool around with. Let me just set that up here. Okay, so we're looking at the back of the radio. By the way, it's in Eton. Eton. I don't really know how to pronounce that exactly right. Nice little radio. I picked it up at a yard sale for all of two dollars. And uh, it's, it's a nice little radio, especially for a shop here. So I just put some wires into the connectors here. First, let's clip on the external antenna direct. Getting a little boost off the coil here. So this is the antenna. See, it didn't do anything. And I see there's a ground connection. Let's hook that up too. When I'm working with radios, I seldom connect the uh, the ground connection. Very seldom. I certainly don't have a rod driven in the ground outside. Here's the ground connection. Huh, really like that. Disconnect the antenna. Reconnect the antenna. Disconnect the ground. Reconnect the ground. So we hear a whine coming in with it. And I think the whine is a heterodyning of the intended signal with uh, an unintended noise signal. And that's where that whistle is coming from. So this is where this coil arrangement might be helpful. So let's insert the coil and capacitor here. Uh, first way we'll do it is, uh, again, in series. So let me just get my wires right. Here's the antenna, connect to the coil. Now, we need the so what I've got now is I've got three things hooked up in series: the coil, the capacitor, and the radio. Let's tune away here. Noise right in the sweet spot here, right? I'm going to switch the wires around so that the chassis is uh, grounded instead of the way I have it right now. So to do that, I would. Switch this here. <laughs> Switch this here. Sort of grounded. Right in the sweet spot. somewhat improved signal, but is it any better than just the antenna connected directly? That's an easy thing for me to compare. Listening carefully. I have a 
stronger signal using the coil and the capacitor, slightly less tetradyne. because it's here. Okay, what are the chances that what's happening here is the capacitor is shorting out and that's why I'm hearing it so much better. this experiment I'm encouraged to try to come up with a uh, arrangement where I can have this coil handy all the time, swing it out into service when I need it, uh, have it so it can be tuned, it doesn't seem to be terribly important to tune it, it seems to be more important to just, uh, just connect it, and I'm not absolutely convinced that it helps improve the, let's call it signal to noise ratio, it's not quite the right use of that term, but I think what I'm trying to get at, I'm trying to bring more signal and less noise to the uh, to the radios that I'm working on. Um, hey, we didn't try this in parallel yet. Okay, one more thing. We'll try this in parallel. So I can put it in parallel easy enough. I just take a lead from here. Connect here. Yeah, I think that's all that's needed. That's all that's needed. Let's turn it back up here. Have I really got this done right? Yes, I do. They're still feeding the signal directly through the radio. I'm still using these coil and capacitor arrangement here. the capacitor at this point to be certain. Okay, anyway, I think that's a little interesting. I think I'm a little bit one step forward to where I was. Thanks for watching. Any comments you might have about how to approach this whole problem of boosting the signal, and I really don't want to connect it to the radio. I really want to transmit it, so to speak, to reduce it through the, uh, through the ether here in my shop so I can uh, improve the signal reception on radios I'm working on. So, that's my experiment. Thanks for watching, and uh, see you soon.